How's it going online, bookclub.org? Adam Bongiovanni back here with another Thursday video. I am here with one of our Book of the Month authors, Alex Feynman. Alex, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you, Adam. Thanks so much for coming on the show. And you've been uh, promoted heavily by onlinebookclub.org. You have a, a lot of different books. And you've, you're have you also the creator of the Super Highway series. Am I, am, I, am I getting all that correctly? Yes, sir. All right. So let's start with Super Highway, the first book. Tell us a little bit about it because I don't want to butcher the description and get it all wrong. Um, Super Highway is about a teenager who discovers a superpower to travel inside of the internet. Not he doesn't just have the power to go inside of the internet and travel to any from any computer to any computer, but he has the power to alter data inside of the oh, computer. Wow. He can literally uh, take a CIA database, put it into his head, walk out of the internet, and lay on the beach uh, reading the files. Um, he's a flawed protagonist he is not uh, a perfect superhero uh that we're so used to so uh that's what makes him attractive to uh, readers okay so you so you're saying the protagonist is, is you could relate to him because obviously like all humans we're not perfect we make mistakes so i feel like if i were if i were choosing a book to read I would rather read something like Super Highway where I could relate to the protagonist rather something like like uh, an, an orthodox superhero uh, comic book where the superhero is absolutely perfect and, and, and they save the day every time. I, I, I like that idea. So tell me, give it, and I know I, we've discussed this before through email, but give me a little bit of your, your background and, and how, you, how you came to write this story and, and came up with this idea. Um, I was born uh, in the former Soviet Union. My family immigrated to the United States when I was a kid. I grew up in Los Angeles, in Hollywood, pretty much. Um, my education was biology and finance, kind of like a mixture of things. Okay. So I kind of like, uh, I am an eclectic collection of experiences, and Superhighway would naturally evolve from those experiences. So I never learned to become a writer. I wrote a book because I felt like I had a story to tell. It, it's wrapped in this uh, sci-fi premise only because it was the most creative uh, premise I could come up with, traveling through the internet. But it's, it's just a conduit for the story itself, this uh, uh, traveling the internet. Um, I think that's pretty much all about me. Um, I, I'm a... Uh, I'm a, I, I work as a professor at a university. Um, I'm a loving dad, and I'm an author uh, of this series, uh, the Super Highway series. Wow, that that's amazing. So, tell me about like uh, being um, an author. W what is it like when you, when you work so hard on something? And obviously, every book and, and every book that somebody puts a lot of time a lot, a lot of time into is is not an easy process. So. Tell me about um, receiving all these compliments and these amazing reviews. H how does that feel after you put so much work into something? Um, being an author is different because uh, from any other project pretty much that you may work on because of this, what, what I call a big unveil. Usually if you're a construction worker and you're bu building a building, you can see whether you're erecting something that looks like a building. If you're a painter, you're painting and you can see like flowers slowly forming or whatever the heck it is that you're painting. Mm. With a book, you are potentially putting in years of work before anyone gets it. And then you unveil just kind of like the magi magician that pulls back a rug to reveal a rabbit. In that same way, you unveil. But the point is that you've spent sometimes years working on it before you get any feedback. And the... If, if you are lucky enough to get positive feedback, and I've been lucky enough to get that with both Superhighway books, uh, Superhighway 1 and Superhighway 2, it, it feels, I, I think, that that big unveil, it, it amplifies the magnitude of uh, the response from the reader. Yeah, that's, that's, wow. that's how I feel about it. Yeah, I guess that, that makes a lot of sense because you could put years and years of research and effort in, in, into a book and really get nothing in return and just... Absolutely. So, so it's amazing that you've released these successful books and, and the third one, way, um, we'll talk about that in a bit, it's a Superhighway trilogy. So you've put in 
ex an excess amount of time into this and to receive these amazing compliments, it really must fuel you as a writer and, and really be rewarding after you did put all this effort. I mean, if you think about it, if you're a writer and you're spending years working on it, it looks good to you. Yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't be spending sure, all this time sure. on it. So there is, in writing, there is potentially, thankfully I haven't been able to experience it, but there could be potentially quite a bit of disappointment uh, because it looks good to you, but it may not, maybe the reader don't see what you saw in your work. Of course. So, yeah. Yeah, wow. Well, so, you, because you really can can never know. It's like, I guess, when you put out a movie or put, a, put out anything creative, you really don't know how the audience or the target demographic is going to perceive it. So, it, it's kind of like, I'm going to put my heart and soul into this project and hope for the best results. And I guess that's all you can really do. You can't survey every person who likes fantasy or science fiction and, and hope that they like this book. You just have to kind of give your all, do, do the best you possibly could, and then, and then of course, hope for the best. But then again, you know, with an example of a movie, um, you know, it might take you six months to shoot the movie. Sure. It's not going to take you years to shoot the movie. And also, you know, you have all these people on the set, you know, a lot of times they say like that they can see that they're working on something special, you true, know, that, true. Uh, not always, but sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And even, I guess, with a song, like you, it, it, even if it takes a month to really write and hone and then you could you could send it to people to listen to for three minutes. You can't do that right. with a book, you know. You if right. you you could get X amount of people, of course, to, to to proofread it after after you put the first copy out or whatever it may be. But even even that, it, it is kind of a, a daunting task to say, okay, could you read this book that I wrote, review it, and let me know what you think? Because that that's a lot of pressure on someone, of course. So you can't just send your book to to fifteen or the fifty different people and have them all read it. So, so I guess a book is really, it's the author's, the author's work, and it, it all depends on if the audience likes the author's work. And that's, that's a lot of pressure for someone, especially for someone who's never, there's of course many authors out there who are probably saying, okay, maybe I should write my first book. So if you had to give advice to, to then the person who's sitting in their house right now, contemplating if they should write a book or not, and, and of course, you just as long as you give honest advice, it, it doesn't have to be, go, go ahead and write it. What, what would you say to them? I mean, uh, I'll I'll say this, like, f for me, telling somebody to go read your book is kind of like telling somebody to go wash your car. <laughs> like, you really can't ask someone to read your book. They have to want to do it themselves, True. you know. So as far as telling somebody uh, to become an author, um, it is something very personal. Like, I, I, as a college professor, I used to believe that you should get a college degree. And I believe that you should get, if possible, an MBA, a master's degree, because uh, it takes just two years to separate yourself from a, an average undergraduate student. Oh, okay. But it, but with a PhD, it's something that should be like a calling that you can't really advise somebody. You have to want to do it yourself. So I would say that with being an author, it's something that you can't really advise somebody to do or not to do. It's just something that you have to feel like you got to have something that you want to take off your chest and it has to be on the blank page that's the only way you're going to do it because the world won't listen to you and um and you want to put it down on paper so as far as advice you you, you just have to have this crazy drive yeah. to, to to do something like that um and you know, regardless of what somebody might say to you, yay or nay, like that's what I would say. Wow, that that's that's a, a that's a great advice. So, what you're saying is, and, and of course this makes sense, that there's there, there are so many books coming out every single day, right? Yes. So if if you're an author who's just writing to make money or writing for the end product, people could probably see right through that. They could see that that it's not authentic, and the words aren't jumping off the page. You really need to feel the words and feel what's going on in the book. And kind of, yes. you have to have this story to tell, and, and if there's passion behind it, uh, um, the readers can sense that. Because readers, for the most part, uh, all the readers that I know in the bookworms are very intelligent people, and and, yes. and, and so they're going to be able to sense. Okay, is this is this BS or is this authentic? And uh, and I feel like if, if someone has this passion project where they're 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 every single night they go home and they write this book, and and, and they, every second of it they're putting their heart and soul into it. As a reader, I'm going to be able to feel that rather than the guy who. 
who said, you know what, I want, I want, I want to hone in on um, this genre because it's successful. I'm just gonna, just gonna write a BS book. You're gonna be able to sense that too. So you, you really, I feel like what you're saying is, if you want to be, if you want to be an author, you really have to want that and have the passion behind it. Yes, okay. you're gonna drown in um, in obscurity if you're gonna just select a genre, like work backwards like that. It should something that come, from, it should be something that comes from within. There has to be an enormous drive because it's a long, long road to put out a book. Oh, yes. Very long road. And um, and then, like you said, you know, the readers are so smart, so smart. And they can totally see right through the author on the page. Like, I think that, you know, if you were to meet, like, a person and talk like an author and mm -hmm. talk to him in person for 15 minutes versus to read your, his work or her work for 15 minutes. You get that person exposed way more through those through the words on page than through the words coming out of that person's mouth. Wow. So, uh, you're going to, and you're going to see so much into the uh, writer's heart, uh, through those words on page. Um, yeah. So you, so you should really be, um, you know, thinking very hard about whether you want to expose yourself as a person. You really, that's another thing, Adam. It's because you're going to basically let people look into your heart. Wow. You're going to let people, especially with Superhighway, Superhighway is written in first person. So, you know, you're basically allowing the reader to look into the heart of the protagonist. Wow. And, and if this protagonist has a lot of you in him, which in the case of Superhighway, that's the case, you're letting the readers look into the heart of, uh, into your own heart. Wow. And yeah, and it's something that you should be ready and be prepared to do. That's really putting yourself out there at a vulnerable state, you know, is saying, okay, like, this is my book, which has a, a lot of me in it. You either like it or you don't, and now you got to be honest with me. So that's that's intense, and so. But obviously, it's people seem to love Super Highway. It's got nothing but great reviews on Alien Book Club, and it's a trilogy. So, so are you, tell us about the Super Highway Three. What when when can we expect that? I work for my work takes time. Like I I I I really like take a lot of time crafting these books, putting a lot of thoughts into them going through many, many drafts uh, before I uh, put the book out. I just released Superhighway 2 in May. Mm -hmm. So it would be at least a year yeah. before Superhighway 3 comes out. I, I, I'm, I, I have the story partially written, but there is a lot more that has to be done before I would ever let a reader touch it. Of course, now that, that makes sense. And... In, in so uh, tell everyone your social media before we sign off. And, of course, we'll link where you can get both Superhighway books. Superhighway is, is, our, is our book of the month. And then Superhighway 1 and Superhighway 2 are both uh, the book of the days. So, guys, please check out these amazing books. They've received nothing but fantastic reviews on onlinebookhub.org. And, Alex, so wh wh where can we find you on social media? The best way to find me on social media is Twitter. Okay, At awesome. Alex Feynman. Great. Oh, that's uh, so easy. So just, just your name. Yes. Yes, at Alex Feynman. And I would lo look forward to connecting with anyone uh, through Twitter. Now, Alex, it was a real pleasure talking to you, and I learned so much just by sitting here talking with you. And as soon as Superhighway 3 comes out, we're going to get you back on the show. So I look forward to it, and everyone check out Alex's work. And once again, Alex, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you, Adam. Have a beautiful day. You too. Thank you so much, Thank Alex. So okay. much Thanks so much, man. I really appreciate Alex. it. And the video, because the usually show. I have to edit it. I feel like for this one, the big thumbs up. I'm learning so much. Everything you said worked in like over 15 minutes. Page. So subscribe to YouTube channel for more videos like this. And also more book related content coming at you every single week. Last week's news week is you. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And I'll get it up. I'll probably get it up sometime tonight. So I'll email you that as soon as it goes up. That's awesome, Adam. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. No, man. Thank you so much for making the time. I really, I know you're such a busy. Schedule. I really appreciate it.